gutter edge soffit fascia leaking. I've done several videos in the past of various things along the bottom as far as apron, drip edge, and starter, and ice and water. We're going to talk about a couple of those things, but first, why I'm here, a little context. So the owner called me, said that he had some gutters redone. I don't know exactly when, but they were new. And he has some water dripping back into the fascia and soffit area, dripping down, causing some damage. He had done some uh, research, found a YouTube video kind of talking about it. He sent me the link. The link is of a video from about three years ago. And in that video, I he was a little wrong. The guy in the video was like a window soffit fascia gutter company. And in the video, it looked like the gutter was raised up too high, lifting the bottom edge. So we're going to look at some things. And by the way, I was going to comment that video, but I looked in the comments. And a lot of people already told him, hey, it looks like the gutter was raised too high. In that video, that guy did not do the gutter, but he was called out to look at it. This case here, he's seen some damage. So let's look at the damage, and then we'll get into some other things regarding the starter, offset, keyways, things like that. So looking up under this bottom edge right here, if you look right here as I gently push on this, there's a big bubble, and you can see water in there. I don't want to poke it and let water come flying out. Let me adjust my ladder here. But there's definitely water up in here. All right, can, you can see that this finger is dry and it's wet. There's some water, just, there it is. I don't want to make a mess of, you can see the water coming out. As far as up under here, the fascia board, it's wood, it's painted. There's a higher lip up behind it. So it tells me water's not running down the face in between the fascia board and the gutter and running back because it wouldn't jump up this. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't conquered gravity, but it, I don't think it's jumping up this and then running down behind this. So it tells me it's coming in above and behind the fascia board up in the soft area. There's water up in here too, back here, higher. So let's look at the issues, what I think it is. But first, shingle starter. I've talked about shingle starter before and why it's really important to put granule side up. So we're going to talk about that real quick, the offset, the keyways. Why granules are on your shingle in the first place, if you're not doing metal or something, the asphalt is covered by these ceramic granules to protect it from the sun. If they're not there, the sun beating down on it is going to degrade it like that right inside here. That's why when you have a shingle manufacturer that says, hey, if the shingle has been hit by hail and it causes the granules to come off, typically because it's a hot shingle and thermal shock and a big hailstone hits it, it is going to cause the granules to come off possibly making a divot, possibly fracturing and breaking through the asphalt mat, whatever the case. If it has hail damage and the asphalt is exposed, no longer will the shingle manufacturer honor their warranty because it is compromised. And why? What it does is that right there. You can see the asphalt on that shingle just to the left has been exposed right where the keyway is, causing it to degrade. Again, that's why you want the shingle starter granule side up. Each one of these has some significant wearing and degrading of the shingles. There's also a nail on the keyway, so that's another thing. You don't want nails in your keyways right there. The other thing is the starter strip. There's a cellophane wrapper that was on here at one point. Typically with a three-tab shingle, what they're gonna do is, as I zoom out here, this shingle is three tabs. There's a seal strip about in this area goes across and in the underside of that shingle is a cellophane strip. So when they're stacked vertically in a bundle, they don't stick to each other. So you can peel it off and install it on the roof. How I can prove and verify that this is a three tab shingle is because it was cut down. If they would have cut these tabs off like most people do, that's fine. It puts the seal strip right at the bottom for this to seal down. That's the correct way to do it if you're not buying specific starter for it. But what they did is trim them down. You can verify that because you can see where the line is right here and how it curves up right here. They cut it crooked. Just happened to be where I'm standing here and you can see that it's cut crooked. The biggest issue is because once they cut it and slid it down, they then flipped it upside down. So the cellophane strip was stuck right there. Well, at some point, somebody had gooped up some black stuff, some tar in there to help seal these down across the bottom because they're probably flapping in the wind. As far as shingle offset, you want to make sure they're offset plenty far so any water coming in here doesn't run off. Well, when you get a buildup of the bottom edge, which we're still going to get to, it causes water to come in. You can see the dirty water trail coming over and getting onto your bottom. In this case, it's D-drip or apron, whatever. And then your last defense is what's under or over it. That is paper, because this roof is older, which is fine, but it's flowing off of the edge metal under it and back down. So it's probably dripping in right off the bottom piece of the deck, 
right before their fascia board and going in and then hitting the top side of their soffit and running back in, finding its way, just water intrusion from that point. If you would have had apron on here with the paper under it, it'd still be doing the same thing if it was raised up. If you have ice and water on top in a warm temperature and it would have stuck down and sealed down, it would have ensured that it had nowhere to go, but eventually off. Regardless whether the case is over under ice and water or not, why is the apron or drip edge raised up? Well, let's look at that now. Looking down this, I hope you, hopefully you can see it. Looking at this line right here, do you see how it looks curved? It's because there's a dip right here. If you go up a little bit, you can see how this looks straight. It's because it's laying flat. Just the way the camera is shining, because there's a dip here, it looks like that's curved. This is high. We want to find out why this is high. It's raised up. So several things could be the culprit here, and we're going to try to dig into it and see. If the fascia board is replaced and raised up, or if it was just built to where the decking comes down and the, the fascia board is as high, it caused a little bit of a ski jump. My personal opinion, when this gutter was put on, it was raised up and lifted this up some. We'll try to look in a little bit further, but you can see it, it goes down a little ways. There's also another section of damage right there where you see that big old bulge in the paint. That's another pocket of water forming. You can see the different areas where water's been dripping up under there. There's also, let me zoom out, there's no soffit vents in this anywhere. So there's also no air inlet for ventilation. Let's see if we can kind of dig in to see what's going on and why this is up high. The other thing, I noticed there's no downspout down here. This is a pretty good size run with one downspout. So in that case, you want to make sure that side's high. This is the low slide sloping down to it. We're going to look at a couple things and see. I don't know if the camera is going to do a good job of showing it. It could be a waviness in the, uh, the fascia board because I'm just using my eye. I don't have a level here. But what you can kind of look at is the distance right here. And you see that it goes and gets short. So it tells me the gutter is hanging down just about in this area and then it raises up up there. So maybe there's just a, it is flowing this way. Maybe there's a little spot where either the, the wood is warped or the gutter is hanging down. I don't know, but you want to make sure it flows this way. It's an okay job. Chances are it's not going to overflow this before it makes its way down, but I probably would have put one down here. I'm not a gutter guy, so disclaimer, but if it were at my house, I definitely would have added one. And uh, since there's no pillar to run it down, I would have brought it back to the wall behind up there by the door, just out of sight, down, and then a plenty good kickoff out to get away from the house and foundation. That's important too. Let's see if we can look up under here. In the video that the homeowner was doing some research on, the guy, I don't know if I said, he was a gutter guy but did not do that gutter job. And after watching the video, I'm like, well, it looks like the gutter was raised up. I was gonna comment down into this old three-year-old old, three -year -old video, but there are other people that already commented the same thing, so I left it and didn't say anything. And then he had updated them at some point that he didn't do the gutter and that they eventually got it addressed. We're gonna see if we can look under here and why this is raised up. I've seen it before where gutter guys just raise this up so high whether they're trying to put a high spot in the middle to slope it down to a drain there and down this way. But you can't raise it up so much it actually lifts the bottom edge of the shingles up. Otherwise, you're going to compromise the water from flowing off correctly and causing a dam, in a sense, and running back laterally and in. That's what it looks like to me. Let's see if we can see under here a little bit. Uh, he did say, by the way, this roof is old. He wants to see if he could possibly get it repaired by a little time and get it replaced. I don't want to drop my phone. I must set phone down just for a second. Okay, so the reason I'm saying that is because, yes, I am going to bend this up just a little. Look under here. The fascia board looks high. The decking is down low. I'm going to set it down again. Yeah, the fascia board is about a quarter inch high off the wood deck. Sorry, I can't hold my phone in and do that. So I don't know if the fascia was replaced at some point or if it's, you know, this is obviously also high in other areas. And that's why the water's coming in in between these and eventually running laterally. So there's just several things to learn on this. By the way, I also had found, just looking at these shingles, that there was no nail in the field or the middle field section of these shingles. So here's an end and it's shot. 
those two tabs did not and this one shot huh, just kind of blows my mind hopefully it's just that one let's see if there's any other ones yeah they appear to be stuck so in other videos i've talked about lifting if you pull on this shingle right here it'll focus and this does not move because it's stuck to it it's not lifting it you know there's a pretty good chance of a nail being there I had done it to this one to check just before I got my camera out I should have waited just you know because sometimes if you pull and it comes up it may be that the shingle did have a nail but it's broken through the mat in this case there is no nail there unfortunately there's no simple fix on this this bottom row all the way down if it's got rotten wood needs to be repaired replaced and the fascia brought down and then make sure you do adequate job with with apron and ice and water on it so there's really no good repair because of the age of the shingle you put a lot of money into repairing the entire bottoms around this when the roof is pretty old anyway so let's get ready to wrap the video up here by the way let's just take a moment to admire the ladder standoff check that out it does an amazing job at protecting the gutters especially when they're brand new I'll leave a link in the description to this down below for you guys. For easy access to find it on Amazon where you can find them. Thankfully, this an amazing viewer told me about this. I've seen different kind like the Warner kind. It's kind of bulky, but I love this one. So I'll leave a link in the description down below. It is an Amazon affiliate link, so it will help the channel just ever so slightly at no additional cost to you. So please check it out. As well as my other favorite tools, the telescoping ladder and my AJC mag hatchet. Game changers when you're doing repair work or install work or an estimator. Some good stuff to have. Links down below. Also, shameless plug, if you're not into stocks on crypto, or you have and you panic sold, it is a bloody, bloody few months. The markets are down. Check the links out for brokers and exchanges that I use. I'd recommend, definitely recommend. And buy whenever, they're, whenever, whenever, blah, other people are panicking. It's an amazing opportunity to buy. And then you just write it. Don't ever invest more than you're willing to lose or money you don't need right away to pay your bills next month. But on top of that, or... With that being said, it's a great time to invest. Give it a thumbs up. Until next time, be safe, and we'll see you then. By the way, also, my brother watched the video, and he's like, hey, you're not looking at the camera. I'm looking at the screen. Unfortunately, my camera lens is right off over here. So if it looks like I'm not looking at you, looking at you, not looking at you, not, I'm looking at the myself. So I apologize. Give it a thumbs up. Until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the next video.